Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Today I wanna to share how to use a spinning wheel to start spinning. Here I have this Saxony Ashford Traveler spinning wheel. A Saxony spinning wheel is the three legs with the wheel offset. It's different than a castle wheel where the wheel is in the center and the legs and treadles come off the center of the wheel. This here is the drive wheel. This is the drive band and it is what rotates the whirl or the flyer that grabs the fiber and puts it onto the bobbin, which is this piece right here. To start out spinning, what I like to have students do is to begin by treadling. And this is the treadle down here and you push it up and down, kind of like you're pedaling a bike. So you're pushing it up and down and that rotates the footman right here which rotates the crank, which is the metal piece attached to it, and then the wheel, and then the drive band connecting here moves all the different pieces that need to be moving. The practice here is to start to treadle, moving the wheel around and the pedal up and down, or the treadle up and down, and getting a nice even rotation. So you can see the footman is going around and around and around, and we have a nice even rotation. When you first start out, you can lose the momentum and start to get this kind of off pace rhythm where you're going down fast and coming up slower and you're trying to balance that out by having a nice steady up and down motion. Practice treadling until you can do this at a nice even pace. If you're working on a double treadle wheel where there's two treadles, you'll be pedaling both feet and going up and down. That will make it a little bit easier to get a nice even rhythm because when you're one foot's up, the other foot's down, and so you have something to press. Whereas on the single treadle, you're having to lift and press and maintain the speed with one foot. The next step in learning to spin is to learn how to work with the fiber. And this is a piece of Merino Superwash roving I got from Paradise Fiber. You can find the links for that in the description below. I'm going to pull this apart into three sections so that it's easier to work with. So I have three bundles. And this is one piece of roving broken up into three bundles. Now I'll set two of these aside in my basket here. And I'm going to take one of the pieces and start to do some drafting. Drafting is where you're taking the fiber, you're pinching the end of the fiber, so where these tails of the fiber are, and you're going to pinch, release with your left hand, and pull with your right hand. And then pinch with your left hand, release with your right hand, and grab further, and then release and pinch and pull. So this motion is a continuous transfer of the, the pinching process between the hands. And it's a very gentle pull and a gentle gripping of the fiber. So when I grip it to pull out a draft, I'm just pinching it gently, just grabbing the fibers gently. And then I pinch with my left hand that's holding the, the roving piece in order to make sure that I'm not pulling too much of the fiber out. This is a good practice for learning how to draft when you're spinning on the wheel because you'll be spinning fiber and you'll want to hold the twist back from entering your roving or else your whole roving will get all twisted up and it'll end up like this and you'll be trying to pull it out and the more to twist that ends up in it, the harder it is to draft. So practicing the drafting is helpful so you can learn the pull and release and pinch and release, pull and release, pinch and release movement where you're transferring the fiber between your hands. You always are holding it with one hand. For me, that's my left hand and then pinching with my right hand. And here I'm showing you a short draw because it's easier to start out with. It's easier to learn drafting with the short draw. Later you can learn the long draw, which is pulling out a long amount of fiber and spinning long strands at a time. So do this transfer between your hands until you have created a nice length of drafted fiber with this whole piece of roving. Another thing to keep in mind as you're drafting this roving is practicing getting an even draft. So where you can see you have an even amount of fiber pulled out and it's going to spin a nice even 
piece of yarn. When you're first starting out, it can be a little bit tricky to get that even draw, understanding how the fibers are working together or against each other. So if you get a little bit of a bumpy start, that's totally fine. You'll just end up with some cool art yarn at the end. And it is warm in my room right now. And so I'm kind of sticking to the fiber. And if you find that you're doing that, if you're in a more humid climate, then just trying to release and pull your hand away so that you're not catching fibers with your hand as you're working, then you'll end up with a nice strand without catching fibers and making a mess. Okay, so I've come to the end of my piece of roving and I'm gonna let this fall to the floor for now, making sure I know where the end is. So I'll set it on the floor for later. And now we're going to set up a leader yarn, which is the yarn that you start on the bobbin and then you spin onto once you start spinning your roving. To start a leader yarn, you're going to want a piece of yarn about 20 inches long and some sort of orifice hook. This is a hook that fits into the hole on your wheel that you can grab the yarn through the orifice hole at the top. So to start this out, take one end of your yarn, loop it around your bobbin, and tie it onto your bobbin. And I'm just gonna do a basic square knot. So that's tied onto the end there, and now I'm going to twist it around a bit so that I have a little bit wound up onto that bobbin, and then thread it through the hooks. And I like to start on this last hook and build up my yarn going this direction and then back. So I'll put it on that last hook and then put my orifice hook through and catch the yarn onto the hook and then pull it through the orifice hole here on the whirl. So there is my leader yarn ready to go and this is what I'll start spinning on. When you start spinning, there are a couple knobs on your wheel that you'll want to be aware of. You may not need to touch them if you just bought your wheel because it probably is preset for you, but if you're having troubles, then a little bit of trouble troubleshooting will help you get started. So this knob here, this is the tension knob for the drive band, and so it raises the mother of all, which is this piece here, and pulls the drive band tighter. So that means that it'll pull this drive band and, or this piece away from the drive wheel. So it's a little bit tighter on the drive band and so will rotate more um, accurately. So loosening that up or tightening that to adjust the drive band means that you'll have more grip on the drive band and more twist. So adjust that until it feels comfortable. And then my wheel is set up with Scotch Tension, which is a band that goes over the end of the bobbin and hooks down here to add tension to the bobbin so that the bobbin doesn't rotate. And this knob here adjusts that tension. So it can either spin a little bit or not spin at all, depending on how much tension you put on it. And that will depend on how fast you want the yarn to get wrapped onto the bobbin. The faster the yarn is pulled onto your bobbin or the higher the tension, the less twist will end up in your finished yarn. The less tension you have on your knob, the more twist can end up in your yarn. And sometimes you can end up with too much twist and then your yarn ends up folding back on itself like this and you end up with too much twist. Figuring out how much tension you want on your Scotch tension will take some time. You will need to do some practicing and experimenting to figure out where it is to begin with and how much you need depending on what type of fiber you're using. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you start spinning, you want to pick one direction for the wheel to rotate and maintain that same direction through the entire bobbin's worth of fiber that you're spinning. So I like to start out in a clockwise direction. So for me, it's clockwise. For you, it'll look counterclockwise. Spinning all of my singles in a clockwise direction. And then when I go back and I go to ply my singles together, I go in a counterclockwise rotation and that will twist them back together. 
A single is a piece of yarn that's one strand. So what, what you would be spinning initially is a single. When you go back and put two strands, two or more strands together, that is called a ply, and it is determined by how many strands you're putting together. So a three ply is three strands of yarn. Decide on the rotation you want to use for your singles and what you want to use for your plies and just maintain that rotation when you're spinning. If you start to spin in the other direction, you'll start to unwind your bobbin and take out the twist from the yarn that you've already spun. So now grab the end of the fiber that you drafted earlier, mine's just sitting here on the floor, and I'm going to take it and overlap it with the end of this yarn here overlap like so, and then start to spin. I grab the spokes of my wheel and give it a rotation and then catch with my foot and allow the end of that lead leader yarn to catch the fiber and then start to spin. And you can see for one, my leader yarn is just kind of rotating around the bobbin. So I need to get it started off so that it starts to wrap around like so. And now I can play around with the tension to make sure that it's tight enough. Tension here is tight enough to pull my fiber onto the bobbin. And I also need to adjust my drive band tension a bit, like so. And that's a little bit too much. So if it's pulling really hard and it's pulling the fiber out of your hand too quickly, then that's too tight on the dry or on the scotch tension. So loosen the scotch tension. And now what I'm doing is I'm just allowing the twist to come up into my drafted fiber and start to eat it onto the bobbin. So I'm just threading this drafted fiber through my fingers. I'm not pulling it or thinning it out or doing anything else to it right now. I'm just practicing spinning it onto the wheel. So this will help you to combine the treadling with your foot with the work of your hand. So kind of patting your head and rubbing your stomach, kind of a motion doing two things with different parts of your body. Practice this with pre-drafted fiber so you get a handle of the two motions before drafting the fiber as you spin. And I'm just letting the wheel pull the fiber onto the bobbin and allowing this to glide through my hands without pulling too hard. And you can see it's just gliding through my fingers right here. I have a very loose pinch, just gently holding on to it and allowing some twist to enter the fiber before I let it go onto the spinning wheel. And there I have a nice little lump. Okay, so there is your first bit of yarn spun onto your wheel. You can come on, I'm gonna take off the scotch tension so I can pull it off. And you can pull off your yarn and wrap it around your hand if you want to just see how your drafting job was. You can also leave it on and continue to spin. So I can pull it off like this and look at my yarn and I have a not quite enough twist in this part of the yarn. It needs a little bit more. The thinner part got a, quite a bit of extra twist so you can see it's starting to curl back on itself and play itself. So go ahead and look at your yarn and just analyze, do you need to draft a little bit thicker, a little bit thinner, more evenly? You can see mine's pretty uneven here with this lump. I like having a little bit of art yarn sometimes, so playing around with the thickness and the thinness of your yarn is a fun way to experiment with art yarn. Once you feel comfortable with the spinning from the pre-drafted fiber, you can start to do some spinning from and drafting at the same time. So I'll re-thread this yarn so I have an end to spin onto. And I'm going to take a second piece of that bundle that I pulled apart and I'm going to spin off of it. So now start your wheel spinning. Oh, I need to put my scotch tension back on. 
and then start your wheel with your foot, start trottling and allow your yarn to go in a bit. And just like we did at the beginning on the leader yarn, you're gonna catch the ends of the fibers onto that yarn. And then this is where that pinch pull comes in. You're gonna pinch before you release with your right hand because this twist is going to want to enter your fiber. So I'm pinching right hand and then pinch with my left hand, release with my right hand, pinch with my right hand, pull, pinch with my left hand, release with my right hand. So it's a constant, one hand is always holding the yarn or holding the twist back from the roving. Whether it's my right hand when I go to do a short draw or my left hand as I allow, allow the twist to enter that yarn. And you can see my yarn is ending up pretty fine. When you start out, it probably won't be quite as fine because that's a little bit trickier to handle. You'll want to pull out a little bit more fiber as you're drawing. But practice this pinch pull just gently. I'm slowly treadling my wheel so that I can control the twist as I'm drafting. And I have a nice tension on my bobbin and my drive band, so I have a nice even pull from the wheel on the fiber that I'm spinning. And you can check, you can pull out some of your fiber and see how much twist is entering. And mine, it's getting a little bit twisty here, but it's not got quite as much twist as I would like for a nice strong yarn. So you can also play around with how many times you treadle the wheel per draft. So I'm gonna draft and treadle twice, and then draft and treadle, treadle twice, draft and treadle twice. And then that way I can kind of control how much twist end up, ends up in the yarn as a whole. So I'm controlling the texture of the entire bobbin of yarn by knowing how much twist I'm putting in each draft of fiber. Okay, if you're spinning along and you have your draft going and all of a sudden you, it comes loose and you lose it and it ends up on your bobbin, in order to get your yarn out to continue spinning, you're just gonna pull it off the bobbin a bit thread it through the hooks and feed it back through the orifice hole and pull it to the point where it has enough twist in it to be, to be a yarn and then start to spin once again. And I'll add the twist in and then I'll grab a bit more of the fiber onto the end of that spun piece just kind of combining or meshing the fibers together and then just con continue spinning. And this will probably happen quite often when you're first starting out and learning the balance of the fibers and the twist and the pull. And there's just a lot of different things to keep track of when you start spinning. So don't be afraid of allowing it to break and just resetting or um, continuing. What I would suggest is not stopping every five minutes and pulling off what you've already spun and breaking it off and throwing it away and starting over. Your first couple bobbins are going to be some really fantastic art yarn. I like calling it art yarn because it'll be lumpy and bumpy and you'll have some really loose spots and some really tight spots and so it's going to be really unique to your experience of spinning. I have here one of my first ever skeins of spun yarn and you can see this thing is pretty scary looking. It kind of looks like a monster. In fact, if um, I was going to do some sort of monster puppet felt piece, uh, this would be on it, probably is the hair, because it kind of looks like some crazy gnarly dreadlocks or something. So you can see I have areas where there's some really thick portions, and then some portions that are way too tight. These are spun way too tight. Um, and so I ended up with this crazy yarn. But the cool thing is that, for one, it's a cool looking yarn. It it has applications um, for projects or 
things to do with it. I kept it because I wanted to see how my process went. And now being able to look back on this is really fun. So keeping your beginning yarn is something that I highly encourage new spinners to do because you do get to see uh, where you start in and where you end up. And now this is a skein of yarn that I spun about two months ago. And you can see it's a lot more balanced. My fiber has just the right amount of twist in it. Um, there are some areas where the uh, yarn is thicker than others, but overall I have a pretty even yarn. And compared to my first yarn, you can see the difference. So being able to see the difference in your work, I think is really encouraging. So. Don't pull off that what you did and throw it away. Save it. Go through the entire process of spinning it and plying it. And then you'll have a great piece, um, a, a story to tell and something to show that you are making progress when you start spinning some things that are more even. Also, as you are spinning, it gets harder and harder to spin art yarn or variegated yarn because your body mechanics and the spinning wheel, as you learn how to use the spinning wheel, the two combined, um, you start to spin really nice, fine, even yarns because that's what pretty much all spinners are shooting for is a nice, even yarn. Your muscle memory stops being able to spin variegated yarns. And you, if you're trying to, it takes some serious concentration or some special adjustments to your wheel in order to make our yarn. So enjoy it while you have it. Later, you can learn how to make it once again. Uh, but for now, just experiment with what you know and enjoy the process of learning how to spin an even yarn while you're spinning some crazy yarns. Thanks so much for watching how to spin on a spinning wheel. I hope you were able to take some tips and tricks from me and get to spinning on your own spinning wheel. I'd love to hear about your progress. Leave a comment below and check out the links in the description for lots of resources. I have a corresponding blog post to go with this video all about the different parts of a spinning wheel and how to get started spinning. So check that out and I will catch you next time. Happy spinning!